So to reduce design complexity, most of our networks are organized in a series of layers of, or different levels, each one built upon one below it. The basic idea of a layered architecture is to divide design into small pieces. Each layer adds to the services provided by the lower layers in such a manner that the highest layer is provided a full set of services to manage communications around the applications. The benefits of the layered models are modularity and clear interfaces. For instance, we have open architecture and comparability between the pro different providers' components. As you can see from the illustration, these are the seven layers of the architecture which we have application. They have a pro protocol between the two of them, presentation, session, transport, network, building, and physical. Try to remember this step by step, but uh, these are kind of necessary to, for the open system internet interconnection model, OSI. So the elements of layer model, the service is a set of actions that the layer offers to another uh, different or even higher layer. So protocol, as you know, is a set of rules that the layer uses to get information, to retrieve, to send, to exchange information with a peer entity. And these rules concern both the contents and the order of the messages getting used. Now, between the layer services interfaces where they are, where they are defined, the messages message come uh, from one layer to another are sent through different inter interfaces. They define which primitive operation services the lower layer makes available to the higher one. And uh, where we can specify the parameters now, where there are the results, what we have to expect. And the set of layers and protocols is called a network architecture. Remember this one, because it's really important. A list of the protocols are used by a certain system. One protocol per layer is called protocol stack. And now in reality, there is, there is no data directly transfer from layer N to one machine or to layer N to another machine. Instead, each layer passes data and control information to the layer immediately below it until the lowest layer is reached. As you can see from the illustration, from layer 5 to layer 1 and the physical medium where they pass the the pack is there, or their message. So we have some elements of layer model. We have the message, and the, the fourth layer we have a header, which is an additional information about the uh, encapsulation about each layer. Now we have H3, H4 in the message, and the second layer we have. Uh, three headers, the message, and the token. T stands for token, because when we uh, decrypt, we almost use all the message. While we encrypt it, we need to, the token to get the message rec recognized again. So the end user will get the message as the first user send it. So of course we have issues for each layer. To find the working path, the network is routing, evolution of the network scaling, protocol layering, identification of sender and receiver, which is, is naming and addressing. Of course, we have different technologies, internet working, network get large, even larger, and we have the problems now rising scalability. Of course, we have to share network bandwidth, with the statistical numbers and multiplexing, how to keep a fast sender from swamping a slow receiver with data, which is flow control. And of course, QOCC, quality of service and security, are also important issues there. OSI, which I mentioned before, Open System Interconnection versus 
TCP IP, which is a transmission control protocol, internet protocol, networking model. OSI has seven layer, while TCP IP has uh, five and four. Five four stands for the TCP IP reference model, and four for the TCP IP, the new um, model. Of course, on the application layer, uh, to our TCP and the OSI model, we have application, presentation and session. We have protocol DNS, domain name system, DHCP, dynamic HCP for uh, checking the IPs, FTP, file trans, uh, transmission protocol, HTTPS, hypertext transmission protocol security, IMAP, LDP, NTP, POP3, RTP, RTPS, SSH, SAP, SMTP, uh, which is SMTP, SNMP, is mainly used for five, fifth generation, 5G. Telnet, TFTP. <clears throat> and now the presentation layer for OSI, we have JPG, MIDE, MPG, PICT, TFF. Of course, on the station layer, we have NetBIOS. Some of you might know it. We have NFS, PAP, SCP, SQL, ZIP. On the other transport layer to the TCP IP and NOSI model, we have TCP UDP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol and UDP. We will get later on what are the differences between them, but some, some uh, connections between two each other. <clears throat> Of course, on the internet layer and network layer, we have ICMP, IGMP, IPsec, IPv4, IPv6, IPX, and RIP protocols. Uh, currently, we are in the IPv4 versions of IPs because there are a lot of IPs to be considered to reunite again, but I don't think they will be ended for now, for like in a period of five years. We will stick to the with the IPv4 because there are a lot of IPs who if we will calculate all them all. But it's gonna take some years. On the leak layer and the data link layer we have ARP. Uh, don't worry about uh, about these protocols because these are really uh, mentioned in the next presentation as chapters, so don't worry. ARP, ATM, CDP, FDD. And frame relay for the cloud, really, really cool and really important. SGLC, MPLC, PPP, SCP, and token ring. While on the physical layer, we have Bluetooth, Ethernet, DSL, ICDN, 802.11, and Wi Fi. Now, the OSI, Open System Interconnection. Of course, it defines a references a large collection of protocols that allow computers to communicate with each other. The OSI reference model describes how information from a software application in one computer moves through a network medium to a software application to another computer. As I said before, OSI Open System Interconnection has seven layers. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer. Now we go with transport service, which is transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. Now we have the layer of functionality. We would each layer do with a uh, quick definition. Application it provides the user interface, GUI, graphical user interface, a six, six layer presentation, which presents data and handles encryption and decryption from the first user and to end user. Fifth layer, we have session, which maintains a distinction between data and of separate applications. It provides dialogue control between hosts. Fourth layer, we have transport, which provides an end-to-end -end connection. Also provides reliable or sometimes unreliable delivery and flow control because of TCP and UDP protocols. We have network, provides uh, uh, logical addressing. It also provides path determination using logical addressing on the third layer. And on the second layer, we have data link layer, which provides media access and physical addressing. On the physical layer, which is really important, and it converts digital data so that it can be sent over the physical medium. 
which would, would move between different hosts. On the la first layer, we have physical layer. It is concerned with transmitting raw bits of a communication layer, which is transmission medium. The design issues have to do with making sure that when one side descends a one bit, it's received by the other side as a one bit, not as a zero bit. The design issues are largely dealt with mechanical and electrical and time interfaces, as well as the physical transmission that medium, which lies below the physical layer. As you can see from the uh, photo, from the anim animation, we can see the transmission medium where the packets are there, the bits, 1010100, etc., and the 1010, etc., to the, from the upper layers to the upper layers. Physical layer, which stands for the medium layer and sends the connection between hosts and sends the message and packets to the end user. The second layer is the link layer. It defines the protocols for delivering data over a particular single type of physical network. It also transforms raw transmission facility into a line that appears free of undetected transmission errors. Of course, the sender breaks up the input data into data frames. Uh, there are a few hundred or few thousand bytes and transmit the frames sequently. It's uh, the sender usually calculates the checksum and sends the checksum together with data. The checksum allows the receiver to determine when a frame has been damaged in traffic or received correctly. This is called the error detection and correction. Error control protocol returns a positive or negative acknowledgement to the sender. A positive acknowledgement indicates the frame was received without errors while a negative acknowledgement indicates the opposite. The flow control prevents a fence sender from overwhelming a slow receiver. For example, a computer can easily generate data faster than a PC can consume it, of course, because a computer is more powerful, powerful than a usual computer and will send more faster and more heavier data than the usual computer can handle it. On the third layer, we have network layer. It's concerned with getting packets from source all the way to the destination with the routing protocols. In, uh, interface between the host and the network. The network layer is typically the boundary between the host and subnet. We have the key design issue, how packets are routed from the source to the destination. Handling conjunctions where too many packets present in a part of uh, the network causes packet delay loss that degrades uh, performance. These are some of the issues we have with the performance. Of course, internet networking a path may traverse different network technologies such as internet, point to point links, etc., uh, ad hoc, P -P -P P2P. And the fourth layer, which is transport layer, it provides transparent uh, transfer of data between the edge system or host, and is responsible for end-to-end -end error recovery and flow control. It ensures complete data transfer, accepts data from above it, split it up in smaller units, if they are needed to be, pass this to the network layer, and ensure that the pieces all arrive correctly at the other end. The transport layer also determines what type of service to provide to the station layer and ultimately to the user of the network. These are some of the functions we have the transport layer, which are multiplexing user ports, error recovery, flow control using windowing, connection establishment and termination, and ordered data transfer. On the fifth layer, we have session layer. It manages the dialog control. It allows traffic to go to one both direction at the same time or only one direction at one time. Of course, this is some from animation token, which I said the, the T in the header, which stands for token. For some protocols, it is requir required that both sides don't attempt the same operation at the same time because we will lose the encryption at this, at this uh, side now. 
To manage this activity, the session layer provides tokens that can be exchanged between two devices. Only one side that is holding the token can perform the critical operation. We have the synchronization checkpointing. A session layer provides a way to insert checkpoint into data stream so that after a crash, only the data transferred after the last checkpoint have to be repeated again. As you can see from the presentation, from the animation tool, presentation layer goes to the transport layer, which is responsible for dialogue control. And the dialogue control is half duplex and full duplex, it means it go both directions at the same time or the only direction at the same time. Synchronization points, procession inline, and in which is the same page. The sixth layer is presentation layer. It handles data format information for network communications. It is done by converting data into generic format that can be understood by both users. Presentation layer is conserved with the syntax and semantics of the information transmitted. It encodes data in a standard agreed upon way. It manages the abstract data structures and converts from representation used inside the computer to a network standard representation and back again. As you can see from the animation, the only concern from the presentation layer is the translation, encryption and data compression, which is really important layer. And of course we have the seventh layer, application layer, which we have the FTP protocol, which connects a remote machine send or fetch an arbitrary file. It deals with authentication, uh, listing the directory contents, ASCII numbers or binary files, etc. We have the remote login, telnet or, or secure shell SSH, which is the ter remote terminal protocol that allow users to once, uh, one site to establish TCP connection to another site and then pass the keystrokes from the local host to the remote site. You have the mail SMTP, which allows a mail delivery agent on a local machine to connect to a mail delivery agent on a remote machine and delivery mail. We have web HTTP, which is base control for communication on the www World Wide Web. We have the summary about open system interconnection, the same from the layer application, the layer protocols, network process application. We have the six layer presentation, which is data representation encryption, fifth layer session, inter host communication, fourth layer transport, end to end connection and reliability, third layer network, path determination logical addressing, second layer data link, which is physical addressing. And the first layer is physical layer, which is the media signal and binary transmission from the raw bits. And this now TCP IP reference model, which is the old model now, so we don't use this. It is not a layer in the normal sense, but is an interface between host and transmission links. It also is link pin that holds the whole architecture together. It has a job to permit hosts to inject packets into any network and have them travel independently to the destination. It defines an of official packet format and protocol called IP. Plus a companion protocol called ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, that helps in function. <coughs> As you can see from animation, the TCP IP module, where the uh, transport layer moves the data between applications on devices in the network. We have two end-to-end -end transport protocols which have been defined. TCP, which is more reliable connection oriented protocol that allows the byte stream originating on one machine to be delivered without error or any other machine in the internet. It segments the incoming byte stream into discrete messages and passes each one onto the internet layer. 
and UDP user telegram protocol is an unreliable connectionless protocol. Applications simply include any session and presentation function that they require on the OSI module and TCPIP. And the summary about the TCPIP is that application layer generates the data and request connections. It is a group of application which requires network communication. A fourth layer for TCPIP is transport layer which establish connection with remote hosts and establish connection between different hosts now. The third layer is network layer, which transfer the packets with the virtual IP addresses. It is responsible for creating the packets that move across the network. The second layer is data link layer on the MAC address, which transfers frames with physical MAC addresses. It is responsible for creating the frames that move across the network. And the first layer is physical layer is a transceiver that drives the sign the signals to on the network. It transmits and receives raw bits. And now what is the difference between OSI and TCPIP? Open system connection or OSI is a generic protocol independent standard acting as communication gateway between the network and, and end user. The only strength of the OSI of France model is the model itself, which proves them to be exceptionally useful for, uh, useful for discussing computer networks. While TCP/IP model is based more on the standard protocols around which the internet has developed, it is communication protocol which allows the connection of hosts over a network. The TCP and IP and OSI architecture models both employ a connection and connectionless mo models. However, the Internet architecture refers to the two models in the TCP IP as simply connections and datagrams. But the OSI reference model, with its pension for precise term terminology, uses the term connection mode and connection oriented model, and the term connectionless mode and the connectionless model. Like all the other open system interconnection layers, the network layer provides both connectionless and connection oriented services. As for TCP IP architecture, the internet layer is exclusively connectionless. As you can see from the animation, we have the OSI model layers, the DARPA layers, and the other protocol, the, the TCP IP protocol suite, HTTP, FTP, SMTP, DNS, RIV, SNMP, which we have all discussed. And uh, DSL, which stands for this digital subscriber line modem, takes digital data and translates to high frequency tones for transmission over telephone wires. The analog signals from many such houses, which are translated back to the digital format in the DSLAM, Digital Subscriber Line Access Multiplexer. As you can see from the animation DSLAM, the analog signals, which are translated into digital format, as you can see from the internet, net telephone network, another home phone, and DSL model, the splitter, if you know, is the split on the, the little box that we use to connect the phone and the network and the DSL model. We have shown in the lecture, yeah, yeah, that one, yes, it is. And we have the existing phone line, 0 to 4 kilohertz phone, 4 to 50 kilohertz upstream data, 50 kilohertz to 1 million hertz to downstream data. You have the switches. Mm. Yes. We have the switches. This is a small hardware device that centralizes communications among the multiple connected devices with one LAN, a local area network. It is a layer 2 device which keeps a record of the MAC addresses of all devices connected to it. So when a frame is received, it knows exactly which part to send it to, without, of course, significantly increasing network response times.
This is why switches are really important in large buildings. And routers. It cleans computers with the internet, so the user can share the connections. It acts as a dispatcher uh, while choosing the best path information to travel, so it is received really very quickly. And it is connected to the least two networks, uh, which is commonly used as a LAN, one local area network and wide uh, area network, and the ICP network, which prov is provided by the internet service provider. We have some lab exercises. The numbers can be expressed in binary numerical system or base two in the numerical system. Numerical values are expressed using only two values, one and zeros. As you can see, we have the power of two. Two to the power of zero is one. Two to the power of one is two. Two to the power of two is four. Two to the power of three is eight. Two to the power of four is 16. Two to the power of five is 32. 2 to the power of 6 is 64, 2 to the power of 7 is 128, 2 to the power of 9 is 256. Uh, to convert from, from binary to the decimal, we have to write down the power of 2 from the right to left. Don't forget that from the right to left, and we have to start from the 2 to the power of 0, which is the value 1. And then we have to increment the exponent by each 1 for each power. Each binary digit corresponds corresponds uh, to its power of 2 and if the digit is 0 it is not taken for the consideration we have to multiply with 0 don't take 0 for consideration only once and then we have to add up the numbers we have the example now uh, so if you could write it down 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 now let's go from from right to left now we have 1, which is 2 to the power of 0. We write it down as a 1. We have 2 in the power of 1, which is 2 now. We have 0. We don't take the consideration. We have 2 in the power of 3 now. We write it down as 8. We have 4. We don't take that. To the power of 4. To the power of 5, we take that. 32, write it down. To the power of 6, we don't take that. To the power of 7, we take that because it is a 1. 128. And as we add them all up, the value is 171. Did you find it? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yes, great. Good for you. Uh, don't worry about it. We will have a lot of exercise about it. Yes, 171. Okay. So, we have some other exercises if you want to go. We have more than one octet. It's really easy, don't worry. Just don't forget the from left to right and add up the numbers. Don't take zero code for consideration too. Uh, we have the methods to deconstruct the numbers as a sum of power 2 or find the value uh, equal or less the number closest to power 2. I've taken the example now, a 13, where I've deconstructed it, which is 8 plus 5, 8 plus 4 plus 1, to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power 2 plus 1, to the power of 0 equals to 1, times 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 2 to the power 2 plus 0, times 2 to the power 1 plus 1, times 2 to the power 0, which is 1101. If you want, you can find uh, the 55, 122, 198, 511, 1023. You can deconstruct it or use another method, which is the division by the number of 2. We get the integer quotient, for the next iteration, we get the remainder for the binary digit when they repeat the steps until the for, until the quotient is equal to zero, and we don't take the for consideration. If you would like to have some exercises, we have the dex hexadecimal numbers, which is from zero to nine and from a to f. Uh, a 
is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. Uh, if you could write it down 1010 is 13 or D in the hexadecimal. As you can see, 10101 is 15 C because it's 15 F and C is 12. As you can see, 1, 5, and 12 from the animation. We have some uh, exercises while adding and subtracting binary numbers. The, these are the rules. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. As you can see from the table, I've done some calculations there. Uh, 1 plus 1 give us 0 and save it for the number uh, 1 to the next state, the next column. Now we have 1, 1, 1. And now we have 0, 1, 0. And now we have left with 1, a sign which will give us 1, 0. And the result is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, which is 18. Of course, we have subtraction, which is 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is 0, but we have to borrow the 1 from the other column. As, uh, as you can see now, 1 minus 1 is 0, because 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 1 is 1, because we borrow from the other column now. And the result is 0, 1, 0, 0, or the decimal number 4. So that's all. Thank you for sticking out with me, and hopefully to see you in uh, uh, tomorrow with 